But not only does God call us to sacrifice, sometimes the critique in the sacrifice is challenging too. Oftentimes it's more challenging than the sacrifice itself. Because we, we want affirmation. <laughs> we, want, we want people to acknowledge what we gave up, right? Jephthah probably would have been great if people were like, man, thanks for giving up your lineage. Every day, just come to me and tell me. Remind me of the sacrifice that I gave because that will help me deal with it. Isn't that kind of how we, how we operate too, right? And so, and so what do they do? They, they go, no, actually, we're mad at you and we're going to burn your house down on you. So how, do we, so, so how do we apply this, right? So we see this story, right? That we're like, man, this is a sordid story. Challenging. But we see that God is slowly moving, and we're going to see this develop in these next few chapters, is that God is continuing to point towards Christ. He's continuing to use the judges and bring them up and show the, the inadequacy of humanity. That like there is nobody here that is going to be able to solve your eternal predicament. There's nobody that's going to solve your heart problem minus Jesus Christ, right? It's the Holy Spirit that, that changes our affections, our hearts. It's, it's the sacrifice of Jesus, his blood that was poured out on our behalf that secures our salvation. His sacrifice, not our sacrifices. So then, why do we have to sacrifice? <laughs> right? If, if it's Jesus' sacrifice, can I just get like the quick line and, and I will take not the glory to glory to glory thing and we'll, I'll just ride this and I'll just get the one glory and I'll have this life a little bit easier. I mean, I'm not the only one that's thinking this, right? Come on. <laughs> because that